Wait, didn't you see this video already? Oh no, you haven't. So yes, iFi, yes, this is their micro line, which is still rather large. But this, be the iDAC 2. So, I did the iCAN Special Edition, which was the 4 Whopper Channel Monster, with those cool switches that were cockeyed. And now this, well, it's a DAC, with a built-in headphone amplifier, and weird placement of things. All right, uh, where's the front? I guess this is the front, because here's the the direct play slash picture of a computer monitor slash power icon, and none of these lights mean anything, because they're just on all the time. But um, RCA outputs, headphone output, headphone output knob, these are fixed line level. So this knob only affects this. And the other side's got a digital output, a coaxial digital output, a USB 3 connector, connector, even though the actual unit only comes with a USB 2, because I don't think they're using bandwidth enough for USB 3, honestly, and I don't think any audio device almost ever will be. Then you got a switch here that is for digital filters, and you got bit, bit perfect, minimum phase, or standard, which why would you include standard when minimum phase and bit perfect exist? I mean, you're just playing with it anyway. And there's a whole list of things down here if you want to read about it. Dedicated Burr Brown, native DSD PCM chipset. Full high definition, 384 kilohertz, DST 256, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's got a, uh, where is this? Direct drive, it's class A, the headphone amp is class A. It's actually not, here. Power, power output of the line outs is 2.1 volts, fixed, with total harmonic distortion plus noise, rated at 100,000 load, 0.0025%, fine. The headphone output, however, the highest it goes, and this is, I think it might be because it's class A, but I've had other class A things and this seems a little off. 350 milliwatts, so a third of a watt, into 16R, I'm assuming that's ohms, yes? They said R, 10% total harmonic distortion, which is a ruinous amount. But um, at one tenth that power output, so 34 milliwatt into 300 R, it's 0.1% total harmonic distortion, which is still a lot for a headphone amp. But I mean, they keep touting how it's class A and oh, so give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe? We'll get to it. Time to plug it in. So I have here one of my USB 3 cables because I just wanted to see if it did anything different. And it doesn't, but it does plug in so satisfyingly. And for this test, I'm going to leave it on minimum phase because I was playing with the filters. Standard or minimum phase really don't sound like there's any difference. And Bit Perfect does some... Now that I flip the switch and then nothing happens, but I flip this Bit Perfect, it's sort of like, there's like a pop, and then I can't tell. So, not a huge fan of digital filters. None of them go to the extreme that they really should. Not like the original iFi ICANN SE where you flip those switches and you enter the Twilight Zone. See, so you get one of those. I got some headphones out to test the internal amp. I've got the uh, DT1990s. The DT1990... DT1990s. That's six decibels. That's way too many. Then again, these are the T50RP. There's only five. It's much better. So these are the unmod well, unmodified, but you know, stock st wow, stock slash standard T50 RPs just with different pads. So these are probably some of the harder ones I have to drive. I usually judge a lot of things over this, and I just like the DT 990s. I've also got on this side of the table, in this corner, wearing very very black trunks, the Stax 252S, which is the standard Stax amp, running the new L300s. Mm, these will have their own review probably real soon, actually. And I'm just going to use this, because if you're going to test out a DAC for its outputs, you're going to test it with stacks, so you're going to get the fuck out of here. Now, plugged it in, it should just be ready to rock and roll. 
it is. Uh, we'll do the 1990s first. And I just want to point this out. When you plug it in, the only thing I notice is this is a little bit like it wiggles. See, like a wiggle? And it could just be this unit, like my unit, the one unit that they sent me has that. But just check, because that just feels scary. Uh, volume's all the way down. Volumes all the way up. What are we playing? Anything good? Orbitals Satan? Okay. Alright, so at 3 o'clock they're getting to the point of unlistenably loud. So that's good. You want it to get loud. I just don't want to hit that distortion they're talking about. Queens of the Stone Age, Alice in Chains. Ooh, Alice in Chains. That's what am I doing? Don't follow the acoustic. I want to say it's a clean headphone amp, but it's... That 10% number is just rattling out of my mind. I don't hear distortion. It's like it's hot. It's like you've over signal. Like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if you have like a separate DAC and an amp, and somehow the DAC can over signal the amp, so it's getting a lot of voltage from that, and you can sort of have to sort of tune it down, like, whoa. And it always just sounds a little too, it's sort of what this is doing here. So, I mean, a very, very passable headphone amp. Let's swap to the... Swap to the hard ones. At rest there, buddy. And then we'll get into the actual DAC, a DAC aspect of this. Because it's kind of weird. I've seen pictures online of this. Where it's like, oh, you buy this and the ICANN SC. And then you have a headphone amp. And a headphone amp. And a DAC. And then the RCAs are here. So it's like, you got to put, what the fuck? Why did it? I understand why they put it here. Because if you're going to sell something like this. And you've already got, because let me explain a DAC here. See, there's a signal conversion from digital ones and zeros to an analog waveform. And it comes out of here at two volts, because you need the signal. So the fact that it's got a, it, there's an amp. Every DAC has an amp built into it. But not all of them, there, there's not a lot of current in a DAC. It makes the voltage go just high enough for this. So, if you make it just go a little bit more, you can power headphones. So you might as well make every DAC on Earth a DAC amp. You could take an ODAC, which just has a 3.5mm output. You can plug headphones into that. And as long as they don't need a lot of current, they will use that just fine. So they might as well just add a damn volume knob and be done with it. Which is what they've done. So, 3 o'clock. And guess what? These are listenable. Like, like... Like, wow, a lot of slow piano is coming up in my random, which probably means I have too much slow piano. Ooh, them sharp highs, but that's T50s for you. Good separation. I'm trying to think of all the things that other people say about headphone amps. Oh, it's good separation. It's a good headphone amp. Those numbers bother me, but I try not to listen to numbers because numbers can throw you off. You can be like, oh, I just read that this has shit this. Therefore, it does. Eh, maybe it does, but I can't hear it. Which doesn't mean anything because I'm a pile of garbage. Chromatics, shadow. Oof. God, I miss these headphones. These might get the Mayflower treatment, by the way. All right, enough of this amateur hour bullshit. So now, I like that you can see the green LEDs on top in here. So now this is this is a DAC. It's, it's a DAC. You buy it for its DAC-ness. So let's uh, DAC it up, bro. And again, the volume knob here doesn't affect this. So we're just, now this box's entire purpose in life is to take our digital signal 
and process it into analog and put it into these stacks. So let's do that. <laughs> now as far as DACs go, and I've used my stacks, which are up there, the uh, 207 Ultras, because I have the pad mod, with this amp, which is the same amp as this, on numerous stacks. I, I prefer them on the own here, but I have heard that off the Sanskrit, off the Emotiva, even had my ODAC out for a while, and there's always a slight, just flavor of something's different. And it's no different than here with the IFI where I can hear there's just a clarity to it. It's an expensive DAC. Let's just put it, for, if it didn't have that headphone amp, this would be the most expensive DAC? No, I, I still reviewed the uh, that multi-bit, son of a bitch from shit. Multi-shit bit, bit, fit, fit bit, shit, mint, okay. But, you know, you, if you're sitting, if you're thinking about a DAC for if you think about this unit for a headphone combo, I mean, you could take this on the road with you. You could plug it in, it's USB powered. So, I mean, there is nothing you can take in a laptop bag that is USB powered only that is probably as good as this. Not including the like Oppo Hot 2s that, you know, are battery powered and designed. This is strictly USB. This is the Fio E10K times 30. 30 E10Ks, what I have, it's at least six Fio E10Ks worth of amazing in here. Just putting that out there. And the fact that it now also has RCA DAC so that I could muse feeling good. Actually, that's a decent recording. Hehehe. <laughs> And you could hear everything that's going on, I'm sure. All right. I don't want to get too overzealous with the music. Yeah. It's pricey. I'll put out, it's pricey. But if we were discussing IFI on this channel, and I love how it's upside down now because, there you go. It's a pricey unit for what it, you can get and Audio Engine D1 that does exactly this, except for the switch and the coaxial output. The, actually, the Audio Engine D1 has a digital input. The Fio E10K, this is, is this a Fio E10K? Now that is a high and low gain switch on the headphone amp. So this doesn't even have that. So it, it is sitting like a very, very fat hippo with gold chains around its neck in a zoo keep full of little little monkeys. Like, like the SMSL M3. I'm talking about USB powered DACs that happen to have headphone amplifiers in them. Fio E10K, SMSL M3, uh, Audio Engine D1, those sort of things. And I'm sure I'm missing a ton of them, so excuse me. But those sort of things, or the uh, the new Fuller, shit Fuller 2, those sort of things are sitting around at the $100 mark, $170 for the Audio Engine. And they're doing excellent jobs. And this thing shows up and is is this and it's got all these you know specs that you just read off like a like an audio files jank off list it's just like oh my god it's got bit perfect timing oh it can do oh, 384 kilohertz so it does more than all of those it is capable of more inputs than all of those bit perfect medium phase standard digital filters selectable with an analog blah 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 I can read the reviews. I don't want to read reviews. I don't read reviews. Says Glass Monkey of HeadFi. He's knighted by Night hi fi I don't even know why. I don't care. Yeah. Direct Drive. Class A Tube Steak. But Burr Brunt. It's got all the... all. It has... If this was a, a Formula One race, you know, the guy in the, in the E10K would show up and he would just have a black, you know, suit. The iFi guy shows up, he's got all the badging everywhere, all these fucking stickers and patches. 
because it does all of it. So when you compare it to its its brethren or its other combatants, this has all the checkboxes checked, which is why it costs more than double of all of them. And I think it's worth it. If you have a need, I think it's worth it. If you have a need for I need the end all deck for my life, and it just happens to have you know a USB thing, and I can take it around because it's only USB powered. Sure, sure, I'm not going to argue. It sounds great. The, the actual DAC outputs sound great. The headphone amp, regardless of those numbers, because those numbers were getting on my nerves a bit. Clean. A little hot. A little hot. But clean. And, I mean, if you got, it, I guess a shit stack, see a shit stack like Magni Mati, you're looking at, at most, 300 bucks for the Uber editions. And you could do an iFi stack, which is this and the ICANN SE. And now you're looking at, well, I just saw it drop down to 300 bucks. This is re you're looking at $650. And I don't know. You're getting more power with the iFi stack, but the Mati 2 Uber is, pr well, the U Mati 2 in general is a clean DAC. So what's your, you're just spending, but it's a cooler form factor, sort of, but then you have like, you're, this is sort of like a berry in the back deck because it's got shit coming out of both sides. Whereas here, the Sanskrit it sits there on a desk and you can see it. It's got a power button. And it's, you know, the USB in and RCA outs. This is a is this direction. You're, you, you're, you have to deal with both ends. Make them touch. So it, it's sort of one of those... It, it's very pretty, but you really... Unless you're using it for its only its internal headphone amp, if you're dacking this up, you're burying that. You'd hide this, you know. Here we go. We're just gonna. I'm gonna put the uh, the eye deck where it belongs. Here we go. Yeah. Don't want to see you anymore. There you go. There, perfect. The eye deck has just assumed the position. So now it's just wire comes in to magic drawer and then comes out and oh. Fuck. Uh huh. In the city. Okay, so that's a positive review. Even though I just shoved it in a drawer, it's a positive review because it's 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 built weirdly. I like IFI. I really do. They send me things to review and they take them back, but I like them in the middle. That bit that I get to play because they are different. They are insane, and I wish they had. They have smaller things that everyone wants me to review the IDSD, and that might come. They also have something to do with tube amps coming. And I'm interested in that because I think they take it to a really strange place. I want to go there. Take me with you, IFI. Take me to that strange tubey place that I want to be. Um, Patreon link in the corner in case I decide to buy anything from them. And then this review is coming or is out. I'm, the order is weird here. Yeah.